Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here. Welcome back to the Railway and welcome back to another review. Today I have an absolute cracking bargain of a train set to show to you. So my last insane bargain of a train set video showed the Mahano cargo train. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. In the comment section, a lot of you guys were telling me that Mahano created a TGV. If you don't know what one of those is, stay tuned. I'll tell you in just a second. I went on to Amazon and had a look and sure enough, yes, they do. I even bought one and guess what? It's got even a slightly more creative name than cargo train. It is, wait for it. Speed train, or more, more specifically, we go speed train. I got one, I just could not resist it. And look at this thing, it looks super, super cool. It's a four car set and the price was bang on point. I paid 80 pounds for this. And in fact, there was a slightly cheaper version for just 75 pounds, although I liked the WeGo livery more, so I went for that. So yeah, it's a TGV duplex, really good price. If you wanna check it out, I will put an affiliate link uh, to Amazon in the description. The cargo train sold out almost immediately when I did that. So if you wanna get one, do do it quickly. Well, that's a do do. Uh, otherwise you might miss out. The price seems really good. I guess the equivalent Hornby train set might be the Eurostar train set, although I looked online and the cheapest I could find it was still 50 pounds more than this. This is even cheaper than Hornby's HST train set, 20 pounds cheaper in fact, and that train set only has three cars, uh, whereas this one has four. So the astonishing value here is pretty clear to see straight away, and not to mention that you get the awesome Mahano controller inside this set as well, which I really like. What is this going to be like? I have to say, even though it was slightly more expensive than cargo train, it came packaged in a box. They didn't just stick a postage label on the train set. It came in a box. Imagine that. Yeah, really happy about this one. So let's not get too crazy. Let's get this out, find out what it's like. Is it worth the money? I think so. Let's find out for sure. So the Wego Speed Train. If you didn't know already, the Wego is a French HST, a high speed train. I'll talk all about that in just a second. First of all, though, let's figure out what we actually get. Uh, their box shows real promise. Uh, look at this. We've got all locomotive wheels driven, which is amazing. Again, none of Hornby's train sets that I've mentioned today have anything like that. And apparently the chassis is metal as well on the loco, which should give it some great weight. This is sounding absolutely amazing, I'll have to say. Look at that. Look at the livery. There's some serious decoration going on with that as well. This is not just like your fictional cargo train. This looks like the real thing. I've looked at photos, and if you do the same, you will see, yep, yeah, this is definitely not something Mahano just made up. On the side of the box here you can see what this contains. I'll just briefly go over this. So you get the diesel loco, a crane car with boom tender, I don't know what that would be. A car, curved tracks, curved terminal with a re-railer track on it. That's pretty cool. You get the quick click, trademark. And then of course you get the controller, which I absolutely love. They're such good controllers, those Mahano controllers. If I show you the back of the box, just for a bit of interest really, you can see uh, some of the other products that Mahano offer. Uh, so yeah, all sorts of different track accessories, points, crossings, actual track packs as well. Yeah, they seem to do a lot of good stuff. And some people were telling me that Mahano went bust in 2007, 2008, something like that, and apparently they did file for bankruptcy by then, but they're still going by the sounds of it. I mean, this Wego livery thing only came out in recent years after they were supposed to have gone bust. So I don't know what the deal is, but the train sets are still readily available, it seems. Although, like I say, get one quick if you want to, because they, uh, they seem to sell out pretty fast. Right, shall we just open this then? Let's find out what this thing is like. I can see already that this is packaged much, much better than the previous train set I looked at, the cargo train. As you can see, everything has a place inside here. The track does as well. And we also get some instructions. I can't remember if um, the cargo train did. Uh, oh, I think it did. Uh, okay, so it doesn't really pertain to this particular train set, although there is a little bit, it looks like, about the pantographs. Yes, this loco does have pantographs. Oh, and actually, yeah, there is a bit about coupling the trains together as well. I'm sure it will be quite intuitive, but um, yes, it's nice to have that on the instructions. I won't pour over those, though, because uh, we'll probably figure it out. It also says, advertisement. Okay, well, anybody that speaks French... I assume it will be French. <laughs> Translate. Does this mean the thing's going to blow up and I'm not aware of it? I'm not too sure. Okay, so I'm not right off the bat going to go into too much detail about the track and the controller because I've already done it before with Mahano stuff. Um, here's the track. It's steel. Uh, if you want to check it out, as I say, if you want to know more rather, uh, check out my 
cargo train review. I won't go into that today. We've got the controller and then we've got those track clips. I will get those out and show you because I didn't know what those were before. Again, this is a nice innovation. These actually hold the track together once you put it together, stop it all coming apart. That's really, really nice. I can't think of any other train set that has anything like that. That's very cool. Have we got uh, straight pins on this adapter? Yes, we have. Yeah, they're not bent like they were on the cargo train. Yeah, it's a slightly more expensive, but I think it's much, much more polished, which is great. So, big question then, which car is the locomotive? I can see pickups on this one, so I'm going to go for this one. Okay. Oh, I tell you what, yeah, this is the loco because it's pretty heavy and it does indeed have a metal chassis. I can feel the whole underframe here is made of metal. Is every wheel driven? Yep, yeah, they're all locked up, which means that each wheel is indeed driven on this. That is fantastic for the money. Really, really good. As I say, way beyond the likes of Hornby is that. And this thing looks great. I mean, no, it's not going to be super detailed. It doesn't seem to have any interior or anything like that. But look at this, it's got great decoration, quite a few different separately fitted parts, including these pantographs, which do work. Look at that, you can lift those up. Cool. Don't think it works or anything, though. No, they're plastic, so they're not going to work. But yeah, this is a great quality little thing. Cool. Very detailed, actually. 80 quid, folks. 80 quid. Amazing. Let's have a look at the presumably dummy car then. This probably is going to be a similar or the same thing. Yeah, just without any of the drive mechanism. And yeah, that one is done in plastic, the underframe, which is fair enough. It looks the same though, so there's no sort of inconsistency there, which is really good. And again, it's got a similar level of detail, which looks great. So we'll put that to one side. Next up then, let's take a look at the coaches. And as you can see, these are duplex coaches, not something I've ever owned before, which is fascinating. So yep, they are two stories, as you can tell. Look at these metal wheels, amazing. We've got all metal wheels on this set, which again is quite an expense, isn't it? Uh, you've got this strange sort of pivoting bogey here, which presumably connects the coaches together, uh, like the real thing does, which is really nice. Again, great decoration on this. There's some great detail to it. I can see there's no interior of any description, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, I think the Hornby sets I've already described do have some sort of interior detail, so that is something to consider. But besides that, it looks great, not too light and flimsy either, which is pretty good. And then the other coach is slightly different. Uh, the detail appears to be largely the same, but as you can see, this one doesn't have the second bogey because the two coaches share a central one, I think. But again, it looks pretty good. There's quite a lot of molded detail. Decoration looks top notch, and they're in great condition as well. Yeah, absolutely top notch. So I think that is basically all we get. Uh, there's no accessories or any extras that we got with the cargo train, no buildings or track mat or anything. I get the feeling that this is supposed to be a bit more of a, a serious model, really, because it's not got all the extras for the play value and such, and there's nothing underneath these trays. However, for the money, presuming everything is tickety-boo and works properly, I'm really happy with this so far. So let's take a close look at the TGV, have a look at some of the different details. But before I do, here's a little bit of information on the actual TGVs and, of course, the Wego high-speed trains. So the TGV was basically France's answer to the HST, operated by the SNCF and was first introduced in 1981. Some designs were capable of reaching a top speed of 200 miles per hour, that's the more recent ones, and of course the duplex arrangement as seen on this model was designed to increase the capacity of each train without increasing the number of coaches and therefore the length of the train. The Wego specifically is an affordable high-speed train service which covers core routes on the French rail network. It was launched for the first time in 2013 and it's very, very popular due to its low cost apparently. And I would say that makes it a really fitting choice of model for Mahano because of course they also seem to offer incredibly low cost train sets. So on that note, let's take a close look and see how this one shapes up. So there it is then, the Mahano TGV duplex up close and personal for you. And I don't own the Hornby Eurostar set that I mentioned earlier, but for £50 less, it is easy to see which set has the better value for money. Which is the most detailed, I don't know yet. I might have to try the Eurostar at some point. As you can see though, this thing looks really, really cool. I love the colour, I love the shape. It's a really cool looking train. I can't wait to put the whole thing together. I have to say seeing it up close as opposed to seeing it from a distance inside the box, the level of detail doesn't look that great. It is a very basic model and you can tell that it's quite cheaply made, but I do think it captures the essence of the duplex TGVs really quite nicely. 
First things first though, the weight isn't too bad on this Loco given the die-cast chassis. This weighs in at 263 grams, which is heavier than the Loco that came with the cargo train set, which is great to hear. And it's also heavier than some of Hornby's railroad diesels as well. It's heavier than the Class 57, for example. It's a lot lighter though than most quality diesels. I mean, the Dapol Class 73 was about 160 grams heavier. It's quite light compared with those, but I would say for the price, it's reasonably heavy. Let's take a close look at some of the details then. Uh, let's talk about the decoration. From any sort of distance, the decoration looks fantastic. It's a very colourful and eye-catching set. Up close, so particularly with these sort of blobs of colour on the side, you can see that they haven't been applied that fantastically. Uh, and I think if this was a Hornby set, it would look quite a lot better. Yeah, the edges aren't that fine, are they? However, the actual text looks much better. The Wego text there looks absolutely fine, as does the website up there. And there are some tiny little prints, such as the number there and a little sign underneath that, probably written in French, actually, so I wouldn't be able to read it, even if I could focus in on it. But yeah, there are some really nice little printed details, tiny little ones actually, which are great to see. Wasn't really expecting that level of decoration on such a cheap set, but there you go, it's there, pretty good. The underframe on this one looks pretty decent then, so this part is made of metal, which is amazing. You know, when I pulled that out from such a cheap train set, the fact that it was cold to the touch, the fact that it was clearly metal was really quite impressive. The bogies too, as you can tell, have quite a lot of molded detail on them, quite like those actually. They look pretty convincing, don't they? On the side we have this moulded grille which isn't etched or anything like that, quite obviously for the price, but as you can see it doesn't look too bad. The upper grills are separately fitted, again not etched, but there is some fine moulded detail to those which is really cool. Look at the end here, this has got a really cool shape to it. Now the glazing isn't that amazing, it doesn't look dreadfully convincing, particularly due to the fact that there's no cab detail behind there whatsoever. Bit of a shame about that. We do have the sort of glazed front lights as you can see there, but I don't believe there are any lights on this model, which is a little bit of a shame. We do have the SNCF logo on the front there, as well as what look like sort of wipers moulded into the front of the windscreen there, which is pretty cool. Up on top, you can see there's a degree of moulded detail there. The most impressive part is probably the pantograph area. As I said earlier, we've got working pantographs, quite a lot of moulded detail around there, including these. I think these are sort of ceramic insulators or something like that. I don't know if there should be some wires fitted to the top of that. There probably would be in real life, but not on the model. Besides that though, yeah, it's relatively basic. As you can see, a lot of the detail is just moulded. We do have a fair few separately fitted parts, like I say, but not a great many. I will show you the back end briefly. Yep, you can see more molded detail there, but certainly nothing in the way of separately fitted parts. So the way you have to judge this relies entirely on context, really. Obviously, if this was a Hornby set and it had cost 150 plus pounds or something like that, I think you'd have license to be a lot more harsh on this. You would have to complain about the lack of molded detail, the relatively poor quality of some of the decoration. But I think for 80 quid, this is probably the cheapest four car HST that you can buy. And actually the quality seems to be reasonably good. So provided you can continue to buy these for 80 pounds, the value for money seems absolutely fine. And I think the model that you get in return for that money is at least reasonable. Uh, it's not too bad. Let's take a look at some of the coaches then, or just one of them. All right, so here's one of the duplex coaches, my first ever duplex coach that I've ever reviewed, I believe, quite impressive that. Now, I think the Loco was just about passable, but the lack of detail on these coaches is a lot more noticeable. It's a lot more similar to the, say, Hornby Junior coaches than it is the Hornby train set coaches. However, there are quite a few improvements over the Hornby Junior coaches. They're not quite that bad. For example, we do actually have real windows, for example, nicely glazed, actually. They're flush with the outer body. As you can see on the inside, though, there is no interior whatsoever, which is a great shame. It's very noticeable. Um, the bodies are removable, so if you wanted to construct an interior yourself, I guess it would make a nice project, but straight out of the box, that aspect is very, very basic. We do, however, as I've already noted, have metal wheels on quite nicely moulded bogies, and of course that is better than Hornby Juniors. It's a bit better quality, that. The decoration is similar to the Locos, really, as you can see. Not the best printed detail in the world. However, from any sort of distance, it is passable, I would say. We do have quite a few separately fitted parts. You've got more of those sort of insulators on the roof there, which looks good. The roofs, by the way, are very basic on these, but I guess they are in real life too, so that's fair enough. And then we've got this interesting sort of corridor connector type thing, which I've never seen before, um, where obviously the two coaches share one bogey there, which is very interesting. I will be fascinated to learn how those connect together and how they look once they are, so that should be interesting. Either way though, hopefully that quick look at one of the coaches gives you an idea of the level of detail. Like I say, it's all about context. It's fine for the money, but obviously don't expect a serious model, particularly where the coaches are concerned. 
So right off the bat, we're down onto the main layout. As you can see, I've got the loco on and the coaches are ready to be put on in just a second. I'm not going to mess around setting up the track because you've seen me do it a hundred times before. And like I say, if you want to see me do it, the previous Mahano train set is available for you to watch. Very briefly though, the track isn't the best in this. It's made of steel and it's just a circle. It's not an oval. You don't get any straights, which isn't going to be an awful lot of fun. I shouldn't think. I think Hornby's train sets are much better with their nickel silver track and they do tend to include straights as well. That's said it's probably still worth getting these Mahano sets because of the controllers which are really really good. Either way let's talk about the mechanism then of the Loco which I have to say is not the best in the world but it has rather impressed me. So the chassis is genuinely made of metal you have this centrally mounted motor which we know can be swapped for a proper five pole one if you want. It may well be a five pole already but I, I doubt it and as you can see that is connected via drive shafts to the bogies so yes this is indeed all-wheel drive Looking underneath the bogies, we have all-wheel pickup as well, which is amazing. And the actual drive transmission is pretty original as well. I've not seen anything like this. Instead of having tons of gears inside the bogies, we have two worm drives per bogie, which transmit the motion directly to each axle, which is very original. Not seen that done before. Maybe worm drives aren't quite as efficient as just regular gears, so perhaps that could be detrimental. But I like that. It's very simple. Not much to go wrong there. As you can also see, we don't have any proper bearings on the wheel sets, which is a bit of a shame, but the actual chassis for the wheel sets are just made of plastic anyway, so there shouldn't be too much wear and tear going on with that. So all-wheel drive, all-wheel pickup, an interesting mechanism. How does it run? I have not tried this yet. This will be the first test. The train is not assembled yet. It's literally just the loco. It is parked over an express point, so we'll see how it handles that. Here we go then, the TGV duplex by Mahano in the Wego livery. Let's go. Ooh, so it works and it stopped. <laughs> okay, I don't think we're going to be amazed by this, folks. Let's give it another go. Hmm, not very good. It's It doesn't seem to be uh, alive. It's sort of limping along. Is it the pickups that are a problem? I don't know. <laughs> No, I think that's going to have to go on the works on the workbench. Oh, no, that's no good, really. OK, so is there something wrong? I'll have a look and I'll get back to you. OK, folks, I am back. That was really, really strange. I don't 100 percent know what was wrong there. It turned out only about two of the wheels were actually picking up, uh, which was crazy because the connection seemed to be fine on all of them. I can only assume copious over lubrication, maybe. Maybe that was insulating all the pickups. I've cleaned the wheels, let it run, powered the motor directly. There's nothing mechanically wrong. It actually seems to be a good runner. And now the pickups seem to be working now that it's run a little bit and I've cleaned them. So, yeah, go figure. Really don't know what the deal was with that. Perhaps slightly dubious quality there. <laughs> beware, beware. Anyway, we're going. <laughs> now, or we going, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's not the best runner in the world. Maybe it will improve as I run it in, but it's certainly not the best. It is no longer cutting out, though, as you can see. It's getting over the express points all right. Uh, let's see what sort of crawl this thing can do then. Let's get it in the shot. Ready? Hmm. Yeah, it's not what you'd call a crawler, is it? I mean, it's not dreadfully important that these things can crawl, but... It would have been nice to have seen a slightly better performance than that. But then again, like I say, if you fancy a project, you can fit one of the two pound eBay motors, uh, which are five pole and much, much better. Or oh, it does cut out a bit if I try and make it crawl. <laughs> but no, not terrible, not terrible. Obviously, it's completely unacceptable that you should have to be stripping down models and cleaning pickups when they're brand new. Maybe I was unlucky. Maybe they're all like it, I've no idea, but as you can see, it's all right now. So let's set it to medium speed before I couple up the train and let's see how it runs. And do the French run their trains on the other side of the road, so to speak? Well, if so, I've swapped it. If not, that makes a nice change. But that looks nice enough, doesn't it? I like the look of that. It seems to run reasonably slowly, uh, which is a bit odd, I guess, for an HST. Let's try it on points then, see how it handles those. Okay, yep, that was all right. Nice. So I'll leave this thing to run in then. <laughs> it's quite noisy actually. And when we come back, we'll see if it's crawling any better. 
Okay, running in has concluded. There we go. And I've decided I'm going to keep this thing running on the middle line because one of the trains I'm going to run alongside it prefers the outside line due to its wider curves and such. Okay, so no derailments or anything like that. The thing ran quite nicely, quite smoothly. Uh, it's not too hot or anything like that, although it is vibrating. Didn't turn the controller all the way down. So on the initial test, the crawl wasn't very good. As I say, I don't think it's that important that this thing can crawl well, but usually a good crawl does demonstrate that the mechanism is a good one. So let's see if the crawl is any better now that this thing has run in. So let's do that. Okay. <laughs> so that is probably about the slowest it can go, and even there it's stalled, I think. So that's not the best, unfortunately. Uh, let's try it the other way. Yeah, I mean, that's not terrible. It's certainly not a crawler. Definitely not, and it does seem to stall quite a lot at those sorts of speeds. But as soon as you get to, yeah, about there probably, as soon as you get to there, it's reasonably smooth. And of course, at the much higher speeds, it's more than adequate. Yeah, it's not the best performer in the world, I have to say. It's not terrible. It is fit for purpose because it's nice and smooth, as you can see. And there's a reasonable amount of strength. You might be surprised about that. I'll tell you more about that in, well, when I do the ratings and such. Yeah, it's fairly strong. For now, though, I'm going to push this forwards. Uh, let's get the rest of the train coupled to it and see how we actually get on with that. This is going to be full, I think. All right, so for the first time ever, I'm going to assemble the train. Uh, I did briefly look at the instructions, but it looks fairly simple, doesn't it? So we'll go with this coach first. We'll see if it runs nice and freely or not. Hopefully it will. Yep, yeah, that's nice. All metal wheels, of course. Can't fault that. How does the coupling work? Let's get that coupling level. Do they just push together? I get that level, yeah, it seems to. Oh yeah, and there's a decisive click. Okay, I like that, that's good. Move it forwards then. Now we've got the interesting part, so this bit presumably clips onto the other part of that bogey. So let's get this one on first. Uh, ooh, okay. Okay, yeah, that was another decisive click. That worked pretty good. And then with the back, I assume, yeah, the coupling looks to be the same as it was on the loco. So just get that on the track if I can. That's not particularly free rolling. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Either way, not a problem. I might put some oil on it later, but it looks like it will work at least. Okay, bit of a snap together, and I think that is the train assembled, so I'll get it started. We'll see how it goes. There are no lights, unfortunately, on this, which is a shame. Fair enough for the money, I suppose, but I do like lights. Okay, let's get it started. There we go, set it to a slightly higher speed there. And the loco I'm running on the outside line is the Backman Voyager, uh, which does tilt, but the tilting mechanism has a fault, which makes uh, the actual driving coach derail on certain curves. And it just is happier on my outer line for whatever reason. You know, mine is not to reason why, I just let it do its thing. So that's why it's on the outside line. There we go. Nice model, that. And then on the inside line, we've got a more British site. We have the HST125 from Hornby. Not too fast, though. There it goes. So enjoy the running session. Oops, I think the TG fee has just derailed. Better stop that. <laughs> Sounded like it has. I'll investigate and tell you what was wrong. Here's another slight issue for you. I was getting the odd derailment, not every lap, every couple of laps or whatever, the uh, centre car would derail. And it's to do with this column here, the top part here was catching on the reciprocating part of the coach and uh, stopping it from turning properly. So what I did was I've just filed down the very corners of these where they were catching the other coach and that's fixed it. So if you get one of these and you notice it derail, like I said, it could have just been my track because it wasn't every time. Um, but it was on quite a few different curves. File those down and see if that's any better. Bit of a strike on quality though, these things should have been tested a bit better than that really. Okay, so your mileage may vary, but I've actually had now to do quite a lot of work to get this to work correctly. Not really acceptable, but for the money I'm not going to complain too much. So for that reason, I'm not going to recommend this for beginners. Yeah, if you're a beginner, try something else and move on to this later on. However, if you don't mind a little bit of a challenge, it's not so much a challenge, just a little bit of a faff, you might not have any problems at all, I suppose. But if you do, you have to be ready for them, I suppose. So consider yourself fairly warned. All right, so here are some of my ratings then for the Mahano TGV train set. 
the level of detail was obviously really quite basic. I would have said it was all right on the actual Loco itself and I guess on the dummy as well, but the coaches in particular did let it down a little bit because there was no interior. Even though basic train sets don't have a lot of detail, I do think they should have interiors because then you can put passengers inside and you can make believe, can't you? It's a bit more fun, a bit more play value. Bit of a shame about that, so I have just given it two stars. The performance though is actually getting better and better. The crawl is still not absolutely amazing, and I suppose if this was a little shunting engine or something, I would penalise much more heavily for that. But as an HST, the higher speed is more important, and it does actually run really quite nicely at the high speeds. It's very, very smooth, it makes a great noise as it runs over the track. I do hope the mic's been able to pick that up. It sounds fantastic when the whole train's on. Not too bad at all. The performance out of the box wasn't that great though, so I have given it the slight benefit of the doubt there. The pulling power is pretty good. I measured this to haul 0.41 newtons of tractive effort, which is about the same as 25 coaches on straight and level track. That is pretty amazing, I have to say, for a relatively light logo. That's close to the Backman Class 45. Quite powerful, that. The mechanism was okay, actually. I was quite impressed with it. I really like the weight of the chassis, pretty good. I like the fact that it's all-wheel drive and all-wheel pickup. That's really, really good. On the downside, the pickups weren't the best. They failed straight away, and I actually had to adjust them before they would run properly. That's not really very acceptable. Of course, I believe the motor's only three-pole, which is probably why it doesn't crawl that great, and there are no proper bearings on the wheel sets. Besides that, though, as a very cheap model, I don't think the mechanism's unacceptable by any means. The quality though isn't that great, I've given it 2.5 stars on the quality, yeah for some reason there's just a little bit of a quality problem with this. The decoration's a little bit messy in some areas, obviously the fact that the Loco didn't run that great when I first got it running, that was a bit of a problem. Minor derailment issues due to different parts catching on each other, slightly wobbly wheels I've noticed in some areas, yeah the quality's not amazing. Some aspects of the quality are fantastic, like I say all wheel drive that's really really good, a die cast chassis, quite a bit of metal on board. That's really good. The coaches, though, are quite light. I maybe don't like that quite so much. But the Loco itself, I guess the quality's all right, yeah. Value for money is where this train set quite obviously shines. For just £80, this is way cheaper than any other similar train set you can pick up. The track isn't amazing. I think that's one very big downside, but it doesn't really justify me knocking a star off, I don't think. If you don't mind the downsides, and there are quite a lot with this, do be very aware of that before you order one of these. But if you're happy to live with them and you don't mind filing a little bit of plastic off here and there and cleaning the pickups, etc, etc, you can save yourself a lot of money from going Mahano rather than Hornby or Blackman or whoever else that makes train sets. So for that, I have given the value 5 star. That was impressive. Overall then, that is a fairly mediocre score of 6.51 out of 10. Into the logbook it goes, there it is, 27th above the 43XX and below the Russian Decapod, both Backman models. Yeah, it's not a bad train set. I mean, obviously, I have to be honest with the scores. Overall though, I can recommend it, but obviously it's not great for a child because I can imagine it being quite frustrating. But it does look good and it runs well and it is fun to use, I have to say. Backman Voyager, not run that in absolutely ages. So yeah, the TGV, it ain't perfect, I have to say, there's quite a lot wrong with it. And even though the Hornby sets are more expensive, you put them on the track and you know they're going to work. This was a lot cheaper and I think value for money is a lot better, but obviously it's been a faff. I have to say though, it's now done several laps without derailing, which means finally I can start to enjoy it. And as you can see, as it runs along, it looks and sounds just amazing. Really quite impressive overall. So they call this a high-speed passenger service. Shall we test that little theory? Shall I ramp it up to full speed, see what happens? I'm expecting derailment. Here we go then, let's ramp it up. Oh yeah, tell you what, it's got some grunt, hasn't it? It's got some speed. Good grief. Wow. It's just a blur, isn't it? <laughs> wow. I have to say, this thing is immense fun. Great fun to run. So if you do decide to pick one of these up at some point, please do let me know in the comments how you get on with this. Did it run fine out of the box? Have you had to file bits off the coaches to stop them derailing? I'd be interested to learn whether mine's just a, a one-off or whether they are a little bit dubious. Oh, blimey. That sound is amazing. I love the sound it makes. 
Okay, folks, well, thank you very much for watching. I think that will just about wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Of course, it's very different, isn't it, to what I normally look at, and so for that, I have enjoyed it. Overall, it's a great set. It does work well now, although, as I say, I'm, I'm, I keep stressing that I have had to tinker with this because I don't want people to buy this and expect it to be amazing straight out of the box. I'm not saying it won't be. I'm just saying if your experience is like mine, you might have some work to do. For the money, to someone like me who doesn't mind opening up Locos, it's well worth it, easily worth it. You know, go and buy one. <laughs> but if you're someone who just wants to open the box and to get the thing working straight away, you might be disappointed. You might be. I don't know. I'm just making it clear. So let me know. Is it a good set or not? Would you buy it? Would you not? Let me know in the poll. There are good reasons why you would want to buy this and equally good reasons why you'd want to avoid it. So whichever you pick is absolutely fine. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed it as something different. It certainly was. Look at that. And I think I'll leave it there, folks. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your company. And I'll see you next time. Cheers, everybody.